Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome to the start of this playthrough of Amnesia the Bunker. Now I know I did say that I wasn't going to be doing any more new LPs until I got my new microphone, but I did end up receiving a key for this game from the developers, so I do have to kind of, you know, cover that within a reasonable amount of time. In fact, I might already be too late by this point, I don't know. It very much varies from site to site, but anyway, this is the bunker. I enjoyed the demo. It was very much kind of a, a throwback to Penumbra and Dark Descent more than Amnesia Rebirth. So it definitely sounds cool. Now it is a fairly short game. The devs have said four to six hours is really all you're gonna get. It is the shortest Amnesia game they've made, but it does seem to be very much Frictional's take on the alien isolation formula. You're trapped in a place with an unkillable creature that constantly is pursuing you, but doesn't necessarily always know where you are, so you have to kind of take it into account and try to avoid it. Or, well, I guess there's probably not any other enemies we can use it against, but, you know, kind of use it to maybe, like, break open a door or something. I'm not really sure what's possible. Anyway, let's get in here, because we already talked about this in the demo. I'm curious to see how this starts, because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a section that wasn't in the demo before we get into the demo, but once we hit that point where we started the demo, we're obviously going to be retreading ground. That's just kind of what happens when we do demo dips or first impressions and then do an LP of a game afterwards. Do I want to do hard? Unforgiving encounters and extreme caution, a true horror test. I don't really know what that affects, though. I kind of wish we had a better breakdown here. Because there's not, like, other enemies aside from rats, as far as I'm aware. So I don't know what exactly this would affect, except maybe we'd have to spend a lot more time hiding. So I think for this game, because it's not combat-focused, I'll actually go with normal. You know, if it was a survival horror game, where we actually have to worry about inventory management and stuff, that would be more, I think, a game I would be willing to do hard on. Also, on the microphone front, I should mention that before I had no idea when I'd be able to get one, now I know for sure that I should be getting it next week. Pretty much just have to order it today, and then it should be showing up the next couple days, Then it'll take me a couple days to probably figure it out and get the best audio settings, because I can't really use the same system I'm using now, but then I'll be able to catch up on a lot of LPs that I've been putting off. To survive this war, you'll need two things. First, a basic set of skills. Second, the good goddamn sense to do whatever's necessary. I can teach you the first. The second is up to you. Alright, so here we are in the trenches of World War One. As Henri, one of the French soldiers. And presumably this is gonna end with us getting knocked the fuck out and waking up in the bunker. But I do think that World War One is definitely a very good setting for horror. You know, there's been some good books and comics that have, well, graphic novels that have been set in World War One. There's a Mike McNeola one that I'm forgetting the name of, but it was pretty good. I read the first half of it already. That is all about vampires and other supernatural creatures being drawn out of hiding by the chaos of World War One and coming out to feed. And you end up with a zeppelin full of vampires descending upon towns. How many bullets do we have? None. Okay. Oh, yeah, we have zero, so we can't load our revolver. Not sure what this would be. I don't know really a lot of French weapons from World War One. Doesn't look too different from like a Webley, but I'm sure it is a French equivalent, something like that. Okay, so R is the gun button. Ah, oh, there we go. 
This is pretty much going to be our frictional tutorial, I think, where they're going to teach you how to do the various things like picking things up and throwing them. Bullets. I wonder if we're going to have to kill anyone before the end of this tutorial. Presumably, we don't have to worry about what cylinder we have selected. I think it'll always go to the next loaded one. So we're not going to be, like, firing blanks by accident. Well, not blanks, but we're just not going to be firing anything at all. Ah, yes. The old break down something by throwing something heavy at it repeatedly. Which, as I mentioned, is a very penumbra kind of puzzle solution. I mean, we seem to have picked a very unoccupied trench at the moment. German soldiers. I guess we do need to shoot somebody. Sorry, Lambert. I do like that it accounts for the fact you have to unload the cylinder as well. You know, the bullets don't just magically vanish when you fire them. You've been injured. Hold tab to see how bad it is. So, like I suspected in the demo, that is your health meter. This is how bloody your hand is when you pull this up. I don't actually have an inventory yet, though. But now they're going to teach us how to heal. Okay. Bandages to cloth. Okay, pretty quick. We don't have to go into a crafting interface. We just drag it right over. Wow, did we make the can, too? <laughs> okay. A pair of grenades. Would these be appropriate for World War One? Because that looks more like a World War II grenade, doesn't it? Not that you can quote me on exactly which one, but I'm pretty sure that's the American grenade from World War II. Maybe not. I just thought that in World War One they used a lot more like stick grenades, not just the Germans, but kind of everybody, like a more of a ball on a stick. The door appears to be very wedged, which I guess is why they gave us a grenade. To be like, hey, you can open doors with grenades if they're stuck. Now, I'm pretty sure the grenades in this do have shrapnel, so we want to get the fuck out of the way when we throw one. Based on some of the gameplay they showed. And I think we did get hit with shrapnel in the demo when I set off that door trap. We are out of ammo. I'm just holding the gun because it reassures me, even if it is empty. It seems like you don't actually have to put away the gun, though, to interact with things, unless they require two hands. What was that? I heard a beep. Oh, that's a whistle. I thought it was a... It sounded like an electronic beep for some reason. Alright, throwing a grenade. Or 
not. Oh, it's a gas grenade. Uh, I don't think I have a solution to that. I'm in the trench like you told me to, to, to get. It is so fast, fast. You're dying on me, We make it out of this hell together. You know, we're nearly there. I'm getting the feeling we're going to see Lambert violently explode in front of us. After hearing that from him. <laughs> Beat that roll, my friend. There you have it, huh? Ah, fate's a bastard. I'm on patrol tonight, then. Say that again. Alright. Uh, we've ended up in a spooky forest. Kind of reminds me of that, those World War I sections in the darkness. Which were definitely a surprise when I played that. I didn't expect to get dropped into, like, the nightmare version of World War I. Where undead Germans fight against undead British. fallen into some kind of cave system that seems to have been opened up by artillery. I wonder if there's something horrible down here. I have to carry your ass. I'll get you back to safety. Just hold on to me. Okay. Uh, I guess the sinkhole plot line never went anywhere. We just ended up back out here again. We're definitely gonna get hit by a shell or something, though. Or step on some unexploded ordnance. Uh oh. I was gonna say, don't worry, I'm zigzagging, but that didn't account for scripted explosions. You are now on your own. Lambert is fucking dead. Learn, adapt, experiment, and survive. It's a little weird to me that the loading icon keeps switching between a lantern and the wind-up flashlight. Here we are, this is where the demo began. Waking up in the bunkers infirmary. Because some nearby French soldiers must have scraped us off of the battlefield. Before running into their own problems with their uh, horrible creature. All right, we don't have a flashlight yet. Uh, rotating is kind of awkward, but usually we don't need to do that. There's a surprising lack of medical supplies in the infirmary, though. Alright, 
So we already read these, but of course I'm going to read them again because I don't expect everyone watch the demo playthrough, even if they're watching this one. July 10th, 1916, Soldat Clement admitted to medical treatment following events of 9th July. Personal effects held in storage locker. I don't know why I'm doing a vaguely English accent for French people. I'll just do a normal voice. Patient remains in weak coma state. Will respond to stimuli, but only for brief periods of time. When last roused, he reported no memory of recent events. Had trouble recalling even his own name. Most likely due to severity of initial head trauma. Will continue to monitor. If status does not improve in a week's time, recommend transfer to St. Etienne for neurological tests. Signed, Dr. Josinski. So, of course, we have amnesia, and we saw that even in our flashback where we were only getting snippets of it. Also, not like cultic, we can't type on the typewriter to get a note. Alright, so I don't think there's any reason to come back to this area later, but I want to make sure that there isn't any, like, you know, things we'll need to investigate once we're set free. Maybe that soldier from the demo won't even be in here. You know, the one who gave us the revolver. So this is going to be something we have to contend with for the entire game, is this flashlight that has to be recharged constantly and loudly. 9th of July, 1700 hours. I'm in a state of agony. It cripples my body, captures my mind, bleeds my soul. This thing I've done, this thing, this thing. It is lunch in the mess hall currently. Oh, the thought of eating repulses me. I like how Henri has, like, the most French accent we've heard out of anyone who's spoken so far. And he didn't really have that when we heard him talking to Lambert. Alright, that one's new. Didn't see that in the demo. They found just a man from the nipples up. Fuel burned corpses. Don't have to worry about any rats over here. I don't think that fuel was there before either. But we're going to need that to keep the generator powered. Also, I'm going to have to be, I think, a little more worried about sound now that we're not in the demo, because I think the creature will be able to kill us pretty, pretty soon. I wouldn't mind getting a decent look at it early on. Okay, where did we get the revolver in the demo? I know he gave it to us, but I assume it's probably going to be in that room, even if he's not around. Whatever's going on in here, there's still a war on outside. Thought I was the last one. We're caught down here. The red fucking officers ran and blew the exit behind them. No one to escape. You need to blow it back open. There's dynamite in the arsenal. Ah. And a handle to trigger it somewhere in the excavation site. Get them, and you can make it out. Whoa. Shit! That thing, it's coming for me. Here, take this. Finish me off, please. I want to die at the hands of a border soldier, not that monster. There's ammo in the pantry. Get it. Do the job, please. A 
Hey, I tried this time. I don't think it's possible to kill him without him getting dragged off. Well, El Creatura has already left. It's not hanging around that hole. And I wasted a bullet. Great. I wonder what happens if I wasted both of those bullets, because you need one in order to get through this door. Alright, so far I'm not seeing anything we need to keep track of for later, but there is a bunch of holes here, which makes me think that we'll have a reason to come back here. Okay, well, here is our save room, I think. It might be the only save room in the game, I don't know. Okay, no number on that one. Important. When processing deceased soldiers, please check the reverse side of their ID tags for any messages, symbols, or locker codes. These are to be wiped clean before the tag is preserved and recorded. Q for Lou, head clerk. Here's our save lantern. I'm guessing that even if this is the only, like, safe room, there is probably another lantern somewhere in the bunker. Just so you don't have to run all the way back here to save, but maybe you do. Maybe they want it to be very inconvenient. Update to all medical and mortuary personnel. The rat problem has not gotten any better. They're swarming over every dead body. They're even coming after the wounded. But the vermin have no interest in the flesh after it is burnt. So, a new policy must be instituted. The bodies of all deceased soldiers must be burned. I have spoken to Father Durai about this matter. He will provide proper consecration for the deceased. Remains will be preserved for families. This is not ideal and it fills my soul with pain, but burning the dead seems to be the only way to stop the rats from coming, so burn them we must. All right, so here's our item box, you know, our kind of Resident Evil style storage. We have our map. So he told us the two things we need to actually escape here. We need a plunger and we need the explosives. The plunger is in the excavation site, which is not on this map. And I have no idea how we get there, but I'm sure we'll learn. And we need the explosives from the arsenal because the exit is sealed. And down here is the generator room. Keep on at all times, the fucker hates light. So yeah, unlike the alien in Alien Isolation, we do actually have a way to keep the creature from chasing us into the main hall. Seven seven zero four. So it seems like this is pretty much the same as the demo so far. Warning! Generator fuel is extremely flammable. Do not light any fires near the fuel. Do not fire any weapons near the fuel. For God's sake, do not even smoke your cigarettes near it. Store it only in sturdy metal canisters. Glass breaks far too easily. If it spills, wipe the area clean immediately, then dispose of the rags outside the bunker. I mean, I guess a fire is definitely something you don't want to deal with in a underground bunker. You know, kind of like a submarine. Except, at least here, there's not a limited amount of oxygen. Order to all men, for the beast hunts in the dark. The light is our only hope, and the generator our only hope. Our only chance and only hope. It must be kept fueled at all times, day and night. A continuous rotation of runs to the main fuel supply must be maintained. Watch each other's backs. Keep each other safe. Do not let the light go out, for all our sake. Alright, so... 
Grab some fuel. Okay, thankfully it just pulls out another one. I don't have to keep equipping them. So, we have a bunch of fuel, but I almost feel like we shouldn't use it yet. That we should wait until the creature becomes more aggressive to activate the generator. I'm kind of curious how durable these doors are. Because in Alien Isolation, they were on a timer when you locked the doors. But here, I feel like there's a chance they could be permanently destroyed if the creature chases you when you try to lock them out. Save there. Is it 7704? Unfortunately, the pocket watch does take up a slot, but that tells us how much time we have left on the generator. Which I guess we don't need right now, because I didn't turn the generator on yet. I've not seen another human for hours now. I might be the last, but in the hope that there might be another, I leave this now so you do not waste any time. This is the only exit, the only way out of this hell of our own making. It was blown closed, it needs to be blown open. Don't bother digging, impossible. Blow it up! The dynamite is locked in the arsenal. The detonator handle is somewhere down in the Roman tunnels, deeper in hell. I go now to try and retrieve them both. Though I do not know if you exist, I pray for you. Please, extend me the same courtesy. You've just found a new objective. So yeah, this is our way out. And we're going to need to bring explosives and a detonator handle here. So we're going to have to find a way into the armory. That's our first kind of main goal, I guess. So really, our first kind of main goal is actually going to be to... get the handle for the lockdown. That is the same. And these levers here will extend the range of lights that the generator powers. So you want to flick them on every time you see them. I think we're safe for the moment. Oh. I locked this door, didn't I? That's where we came from. So we don't need that door open right now. That just gives us another way to get back to the safe room. While we are being pursued, I assume. And because that one has potentially lights, we could use that to protect ourselves. That's locked, but we remember that we can get in here. Took me a while to find it in the demo. Hmm. A dead rat. I mean, I don't know how limited the fuel is for the generator. You know, presumably there's only so much of it you can find. But it seems smart to use it or not use it now when I think we're not in too much danger yet and then save it for when the danger starts to increase. Uh, we did not find Oop, shotgun shells. I didn't even think there was a shotgun in this game. Okay, there's the wheel we need. We have to find Delilah's corpse, and I think that's in his room. Is that 8868? I can't tell what that second number is.
8368 Travers. Does that get us some grenades? There does seem to be an abundance of grenades Nights around here. July. I do not know the time, but dusk has fallen, and still, of course, no word. When I asked the sergeant, he shrugged, as if I was asking about when it might next rain. These fools around me, laughing, drinking, arguing. Do they know what I've done? Do they suspect it? I feel they must all be guilty of something, and yet they laugh, drink, argue. God knows what I've done. I wonder if his judgment could be worse than my own. I wonder if perhaps it's going to turn out that Henri... It's interesting that we have a locker here, because that means we've either been here for a while or we were here before. But I'm wondering if Henri is going to be responsible to some degree for this creature being here, and that's the thing that he doesn't remember. Because in Dark Descent, you know, Daniel, the thing he had forgotten was that he was more or less responsible for the horrible creature that was chasing him. For having touched the orb. And then brought it to Castle Brennenburg. And in Rebirth, it was that Tassi had drank the otherworld water that was turning her and the others into creatures. So, it seems here that he's also forgotten whatever it is that is... ...a bad thing. Whatever he is guilty of. So... There's an emergency lockdown which blocks off a bunch of these areas, and we need a wheel for that. And the wheel is in Delisle's locker, so we have to find Delisle's room. I forgot to unblock the door. So far, no sign of the creature. Aside from the guy I killed, but you know what I mean. We haven't heard it growling or hiding an event yet. I guess they're not really vents, they're literally just holes in the walls, but you know what I mean. So, I don't think we need to be stealthy yet. Alright. Now, I don't know if that means that there is actually a hallway above us, or if... It has just tunneled through the ceiling. Okay, this is how I blew myself up last time. I wonder if there's a way to disarm this. I think we can get in there from behind. At least there's like a little X telling you, hey, don't open this door. Alright, not really sure I want to be in here. I'm locked in here. I'm going to push that in front of the hole while there isn't an arm coming out of it, because that's how I died in the demo. Okay, nothing we need in here. Remember this guy? He kind of looks like <laughs> the keeper, or wait, were they keepers? Whatever the monster is, the regular monster from the first game. It's just the kind of like gushy face and hangy eyeballs. Med kit. Oh, that's a pocket bag, so now we can carry an extra item. LaRue's Report, 15th May, 1916, from Soldat LaRue. That's uh, apparently equivalent to a private. 
to M. Fournier and D. Blanchette. I am now putting the, into writing what I have reported to both my immediate superiors. Last evening, the 14th of May, I was assigned to aid the engineers in mapping the Roman tunnels. As I entered the deepest area of the tunnels, I noticed strange glowing liquid seeping from the walls. When I turned around, the walls of the tunnel themselves were suddenly gone, and I was standing in a vast plain of darkness. In the distance, there was a sickly light that seemed to be calling to me forward. Between it and me, malformed shadows moved. I blinked again. It was gone. I was back in the tunnel. It lasted but a split second, but I am quite convinced that what I saw was no daydream. It was real. Since that experience, I have felt haunted, like a part of me is still there, stuck in the tunnel. I keep seeing shapes moving at the edge of my vision. I am formally requesting medical leave. Please help me. So again, he may have encountered some literal otherworld stuff. Because that is generally the source of trouble in these amnesia games, is contact with the other world, or people who have come from the other world, like Alexander. Alright, so there's Delisle. He is the wheel that we need. Maybe this is the tripwire that I stepped on, because I definitely stepped on one of them. Oh no, it was like a Molotov, not a grenade. But yeah, I think we have to set this off. Turning on. Can I just, like, take the grenade off? I mean, I guess I could throw something at it and see if that'll set the grenade off. Or just throw a grenade at it and really set it off. Uh, I need something to throw. There's the Roman ruins, which are down below the bunker somewhere. heavy enough. I've seen at least one person say that the flashlight got really annoying having to crank all the way through, but I mean I didn't have a problem with the one in Metro, though I think that one lasted uh, a fair bit longer than this one does. Second May 1916 from Sergeant Joubert to M. Fournier and D. Blanchette. Engineers have broken through our storage areas into the old Roman tunnels. They are, as we thought, structurally sound, deep, and I confess I was skeptical of this last point. They do indeed lead in the direction of the German line. By September, we should be in position to launch a massive push from inside the tunnels. Perhaps of note, inside the tunnels, we found urn, Latin text, etc. We'll do our best to preserve some materials for posterity. Updates to public. The creature approaches. The creature is here! Okay, you still get that little bit of dark vision, like in the previous games. And you can crawl under tables. Alright, the dust is still coming out of there, but the creature came, or the sound came from over there. This thing takes a couple of yanks before it even just works at all. What I should do is turn up the brightness a little bit, because I did notice that the video I did for the demo was fairly dark. I mean, it is a dark game, but for the uh, benefit of the viewers, it might help to turn up the gamma just a little bit. Not too much. 
just enough that we can actually like see something when I'm running around like this because we're probably gonna run around like this a lot I wonder if you can lock a door through the <laughs> no you can't just like stick your arm through and lock it yeah, one pull is basically useless. Okay, Renard is locked. Cunier is not. So, in the demo, the arm would come out of the hole, but here, it seems like we're not quite at that point yet. So we're just getting an indication that the creature is in the hole, but it's not yet reaching out for us. I wonder what happens if I just chuck a grenade into the hole that he's in. Situation report. After Tremblay's death at the bunker descended into chaos, I have retaken control and ordered the men to form up in squads. They are to hunt the beast down and kill it. As they tell me it's not possible, they tell me the bullets don't kill it. They only buy a little time and the beast comes back angrier. Cowards. I have sent them back out now to do as they should. Hunt and kill it. If they fail, they'll face worse fate than claws in the darkness. I can't remember if this is the one where it killed me when I tried to push a crate in front of the hole. Seems like he vacated. I mean, we saw it explode through a crate when it grabbed that guy at the start, so I don't think this is really gonna stop it if it wants to come out. But I'm hoping we might draw a little less attention, at least. What's this doing here? There's the hand. Okay, so I I don't think there's a way for us to get into the other room next to us from here. I mean, I guess we might be able to blow the door open. Right? Like, if we just chuck a grenade in here. Uh, I've got three of them. Oh, that's what I was trying to grab, the fuel. That worked. I'm not sure if there's actually a hole the creature can get out of yet. Like, we might be in an area where it can only grab you, but it can't actually, like, come running at you yet. Renard, I want you to personally oversee nighttime security in the tunnels. The last two nights I've heard someone moving through the corridors when there was no patrol scheduled. I will not have another bout of sabotage. If emergency lockdown becomes necessary, find Delisle. It keeps the necessary lockdown wheels tucked away in mission storage. Blanche. Forgive me, despite being in Canada and living on the Ontario-Quebec border, I do not know a French accent or how to do one. So you're gonna hear all kinds of, like, pseudo other accents that kind of vaguely might sound like certain French people. Further to your investigations of the tunnel's sabotage, your assumptions are safe. Start with those who spread the rumors about magic and devilry in the tunnels. Clearly, they've had sabotage in their minds for weeks. 
Use any means necessary to elicit confessions. We cannot allow this treason to go unpunished. I'm also not going to remember the voices I do for each of these people, so forgive me. It's going to be different every time. I mean, eventually we have to run out of new characters to find, right? Bandages. All right. I think we're done over here. Checked in there. a shortcut, but I forget to wear. Oh, just back to the main, yeah, area. I mean, so far, it doesn't seem like there's a reason for us. Oh, God. I wonder if it's possible that I could have locked myself out and have to go all the way back around if I had locked both of these doors. I can't lock that one. But yeah, it seems like it has been a good idea not to use our power yet because no creature anyway, you know? I remember reading somewhere that if the music is not playing in here, then you're not actually safe. You can see when I lock both doors, then the music comes on. I like that we have this, though, so we can, like... Oh, is there a creature out there? No? Save. We don't need the cloth right now. Probably don't need two grenades on us. And we'll put the fuel in the generator. No, he automatically pulls it out when you get close. Alright, we've almost got a full generator, so it might be worth starting it. Oh yeah, I put the clock away. I was like, how do I pull that out? I have to sync it up with the generator. There is a shortcut key. I thought it was C. Okay, so... Uh, the amount of fuel seems to go up to about an hour. So yeah, right now we have 45 minutes of power. So that gas does actually last a pretty good amount of time. And I think that's 45 actual minutes from what we had in the demo. Okay, so... Now we can get the missing storage and get Delisle's wheel. And then we can end the lockdown. And that's where the demo ended. saving and then from there I don't know where we go uh, I don't remember what exactly is behind those lockdown I guess uh, communications in prison I know we found a wine room as well I think that's past the tripwire that I didn't disable yet I mean, obviously, we can see how many people are in here, though I don't think this accounts for the officers. Alright, Delisle, what was your number? 6037. Not 
This is the wheel. Which does take up a spot in our inventory. I like that there's a picture here of, like, kind of how we get in here. It's not really much of a hint if we're already in here, you know? Okay, so now we got the wheel. We can get rid of the lockdown, but there is still that whole other area. And I think there is some handy stuff in there. Well, we're running pretty short on inventory. So let's get this in here. I wonder if using this will increase the creature's aggression because we've made progress. So yeah, we have soldiers' quarters and communications that way and prison this way. And we didn't pick up the note yet, but there is one talking about German prisoners they had in here. Oh, I think we hit a loading zone. Yeah, so now we're in a separate section because... I think the prison was a whole section on the map. We're not going to go that way yet. How weird. It was like an instant load that time. Okay, now I hear footsteps. The creature is out and about. I mean, I want to get a look at it, but it will kill me if I do that. It's like following right behind me. I need somewhere to hide. Fucking doors are locked. So, a lot of these ones are already switched on. Survived first encounter. Did that really count? We didn't even see it. Not even vaguely. It was just behind me somewhere. Uh, okay. Did we find a map? Or an objective? I don't know what that, that scribbling sound was. Oh, I think we marked something on the map, which is the map back in the safe room. So there's like no actual map, which is consistent with all the previous frictional games. Do you think I could jump over this without exploding? Got another rat hole. I think I heard some nibbling. That one looks kind of loose. I didn't take any damage yet. I haven't exploded myself yet like I did in the demo. So it's a shame because the way it's designed, I think we are meant to just keep running back to the safe room to unload our whole inventory and then running back here to continue picking stuff up. Wait. Is up off or down? I thought... I thought up was on. It'd be helpful if we had the generator on, because then we could actually tell if this was working. I'm not sure why some of the lights work and some of them don't. Like, what is powering these lights, if not the main generator? Another dog tag for... Hey, look, it's me. That means this is probably another one of our logs. 9th of July. Night. My conscience compels me now, as it failed to compel me then. I must do something, even if it costs me my own life. 
I must do something lest I never sleep again. I must do something or risk greeting hell itself as a relief. We must do something. I go. Whoop. Hello, creature. Wait. So, getting grabbed didn't kill me there. I could have ran away, but I was stuck between him and the wall, so I just instantly died anyway. Alright, that's gonna throw us all the way back here. I think. Did I save after putting the wheel in? Because we don't have the wheel anymore. But the generator is on. Okay, so... That is on. So I've actually been shutting off all the ones we ran into. <laughs> oh, you know what? I forgot we turned the generator on. That's why the lights were on down there. But yeah, so... We need to daisy chain the power. You have to turn on every switch in sequence, otherwise it will not power anything beyond that point. Oh, right. We have to go get the wheel, because I grabbed that on the way. That's in here. We have Delisle's number. I don't remember it. 6037. So we're not going to go much further here. We're going to save shortly, because we've kind of gotten back to the end of the demo already, aside from the one room that I haven't checked. So we'll grab the wheel, and we will put it back into the slot. But yeah, I assume the creature will not come into a room that's well lit like this. Maybe it will if it's chasing you, though. It does seem to have a sleeve. Oh. See, he didn't chase me into the light. Not sure why the lights flicker around it, though. That seems like uh, that could be a problem for us. I mean, it's kind of humanoid looking. I want to get a little bit of a closer look at it. Okay, so he can chase you into the dark. Or into the light because it gets dark around him. So you're not completely safe, but he doesn't seem to like it very much because he jumped back into the wall. Okay. Pause it that for now. And... You know what? I'm sure we'll find more grenades. We don't need to hold on to these. They're not really weapons, though I think we can use them to clear out rats or scare off the creature for a moment. But we're going to use this to clear out that trip mine. Not the one out in the open, but the other one. Oh, we can't go this way either without lockdown. Is it this door? No, we just haven't been in here. Oh my god. Multiple notes. Both of July, 1916. Night. Strange scratching sounds a few moments ago, and now it sounds like someone is pacing in the hallway. Probably Renard, drunk on the stash of wine. I know he hides from us. Best I confront him now, and either get him into bed to sleep it off, or convince him to share a bottle or two with me. 15th of July, 1916. Cold fear runs through all our veins now. Cunier has terrorized the men for answers. They say they were asleep until Renard screams. I believe them, of course. Bounier went so far as to accuse prisoner 73014 of escaping his cell and committing the murder. Impossible. I worry about Bounier. His rage hides fear. He takes it out on the men, and I can see no way to stop it. It breathes contempt. My mind slips back to the moment Reynard started screaming. How easily it could have been me. How easily it still could be. 
For the first time, I wish to order the attack would come. I would rather face a thousand German guns than this nameless dread. Nope. We got an incendiary? Gas grenade. Wonder if that's any good against the creature. To any who find this, Founier, our commanding officer, cowers next to me now. He's lost his mind to an abyss of fear. He repeats the same refrain over and over. Flee! Flee! We must flee and seal the beast where it belongs! He wants to run to blow up the exit behind him, sealing the demon down here, the demon and our men. His constant refrain, it is getting to me. That same void of terror, it is also overtaking me. To any of my men who see this, once we're free of this place, I will get the arsenal code from him. I will get it and I will radio it back to you. Trapped down here with that beast, that arsenal may be your only hope. It's all I can do, all I have the courage to do. Get to the communications room in the soldiers' quarters. Hide there. I'll broadcast the code to you. Okay, so now we know that if we want to get in the arsenal, we need to get to communications first. I can't wind the gramophone to distract it either. Okay, I don't know if he's lurking about or if he's just in a hole. I don't know why that box violently exploded. Okay, this is the tripwire door, right? No. Where is that? That's this one. So I'm just going to... Huck that. And hope that it is very drawn to those explosions and not me. Huh. Lock the beast path out of a hole. Did I... I wonder if you can chuck a grenade in these to collapse them permanently. Like a grub hole in Gears of War. Alright, I think he's in the hole right next to me. kind of reach my arms out and turn this while leaning away from it. Okay. Got that open. So now we're going to go back and save and that's going to be the end of this episode because we have made tangible progress and next time we're going to head into well, communications I guess. So, thank you for joining me for the start of Amnesia the Bunker. We are going to continue soon. And this should be a short LP, based on what they said. Especially if we end up with hour-long episodes like this, but... Thanks for joining me once more, and I will see you back in the bunker soon. Until then, take care, y'all.